We brought a Starlink, obviously reading from a low Earth orbit satellite. We've got a wire facing over here. The wire goes into the back of the van. In the back of the van, we've got a generator that's running. Uh, we'll run for about seven days on the back of this one here. Uh, then there's a, a feed. The bed is made, so I'm very happy about that. No one slept in there. And then here, you have a door. And in this magic door is nothing too magical. Uh, mosquito net. And then in here, you can see there's a switch. That switch is plugged into the Starlink. The Starlink is then plugged into, up here in the top, an air node. An air node is an off-the-shelf piece of equipment you can buy from Blinks, you can buy from anybody else. If you now look up at the sky, you'll start to see that white box there is providing internet connectivity to everybody that has an eSIM on the world mobile network. So we're reaching speeds of about 200 megabytes a second at the moment. Alex, uh, Alex M from the Telegram group just confirmed that. And what happens is air node is then connected to our cellular core. It's registered on our cellular core. So anybody who puts up an air node on their roof, on their house, will register our cellular core. And then that routes all of the traffic back through the centralized earth nodes that we have right now and then makes the connection possible. What is going on, Ada Nation? Welcome to DAP Central. My name is Farid, and as a part of today's video, I've got an exclusive interview and a behind the scenes look of the first ever wireless network launched within the United States, supported by the World Mobile Team. Now, this was done with Mickey Watkins, the CEO and founder of the platform. And so, you guys enjoyed today's video. And as always, if you guys do find it helpful, please make sure to tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions surrounding world mobile then make sure you leave them down below that said you guys enjoyed today's video we do have actually a, a truck outside a winnebago kind of truck mm. outside which is live with a world mobile node mm. and our sim card will connect to that node so that is the first example of the world mobile network going live here in america wow i literally saw the van on the on the green grass Yes. right out there as we were coming in exactly so stay tuned if you go back in a few moments you'll probably be able to connect we'll have some kind of demo shown to you and um we're very excited no we will be back congratulations to Thanks. you mickey and the rest of the team Thank on what you, you guys are doing actually here. You just uh you just called him out there he is <laughs> oh, yeah. everything good everything is great mickey how are you good no complaints you want to grab right. yeah. sure this is a very interesting microphone with I... uh, with the nice little fuzzy there, yeah, huh? It's nice. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you. So we just heard that there is a world mobile van outside ready to do something that has not been done here you in the to, United you States. Want me to take it, sit. Let's go ahead and check it out. So the idea of this was to just demonstrate how you can put up an air node anywhere yeah. using, okay, CBRS is unlicensed spectrum, but it's not unlicensed like Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. There is necessary licenses that you, you need to have to actually be able to run it mm -hmm. and obligations and rules mm -hmm. that you need to play with them. So what we decided to do was instead of just taking the Wi-Fi or the, ca or the uh, cable connection here mm -hmm. in the hotel and plugging it in, we thought, look, we'll show how easy it is to, to run a mobile network. Mm -hmm. So we called up Starlink and we said to the people we know there, hey, we need a Starlink with good priority. Where do you need it? We need it in Denver. When do you need it for? Next week. Okay, done. So they shipped it over here to the hotel. And I called up the guys and said, I wanted to hire a Winnebago. So they went out there and they got this Winnebago here. Wow. Sticker. So up in that roof, very hidden, as you can see, is the actual Starlink. And then down on the floor right there is the cell itself. And there's another cell at the back. So I wouldn't go too close. They might bite. <laughs> but... Um, if you see here on my mobile telephone. You got to come and get this right here. I decided uh, for once that this would be, I could steal the show here, um, but this is Mr. Telecom. So the network itself is actually called Mr. Telecom uh, and that's programmed into my SIM. So when wow. I get you a, mo a SIM card, we can have the App Central. Wow. And, SIM card as well. and when you travel all around the world, it will say the same. That is impressive. When you pass past one of our nodes over there, uh, then that node itself will then automatically hook to your eSIM or your mm -hmm. eSIM will automatically hook to that node. Use the native infrastructure. The native infrastructure is much cheaper than partner infrastructure. But when you're out of sight of this node, mm -hmm. 
then we'll connect to partner infrastructure. Okay. And then partner infrastructure gives you that global coverage. So right now, in theory, we have around 180 different countries. Mm -hmm. Right now, tested is about 40, 45 mm -hmm. different countries. Uh, and these countries that then ripe immediately to, to launch Operation Anode. Wow, how impressive, Nikki. Congratulations to you. Let me just make sure that I understand. So this is basically acting as, as a mobile network. Um, and as long as you're within range, you're able to use that to connect to it, to make phone calls. Network, and it should, it should connect around 1,000 meters radius. Wow. From where the set is pointed. Now, how many of these are within the United States right now? Uh, I can't tell you. That news will be coming out soon. <laughs> that, that means that there's more than one, though. There's definitely more than one. Okay, okay. That is amazing I'll give news. you some clues. We're working with ISPs uh, uh -huh. to upgrade them from being a 1P to a 3P. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with other uh, mobile network operators. Uh, we're working with private companies. So a lot of stuff is happening behind the scenes that you don't really see. But um, soon you'll be able to connect to it. Got it, got it, got it. Is there anything else that you want to share with us with respect to all the development that's been made here within the United States? There's so much to share, mm -hmm. but I think what I want to share is um, when will I next be on your show? I would love to have you on as soon as you're ready. I did reach out to Josie. She said, I believe that you've got some time this Saturday in person. Now, because, because we're going to be in person, I'm not going to have all of the fancy stuff that I normally have, but I would be more than happy to have you on my channel here for another, for another interview as soon as you make it back. Thank you very much. Sounds good, Mickey. See you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys heard it here from the man himself, Mickey. Basically yes. touching on all of the new infrastructure that has now come along from the world. Mobile 20 team. minutes to set up a mobile network. Now all you've got to do is stick it to the side of your house, put it on your rooftop. All of a sudden you're part of the sharing economy. As each ECM, ECM goes past, you've got to remember that it's not just World Mobile that are buying the ECM. Mm -hmm. We have tourists, mm -hmm. we have regional people, we have local people, we have international people who are using this ECM. So then it's our job with uh, scan for points to be able to understand where these coverage gaps exist, understand the flow of where these tourists go or where these regional or local people live or travel, mm -hmm. and then to be able to put air nodes on operation air nodes to be able to be populated. And then the idea, of course, is that partner networks are fantastic. It's part of a sharing economy, but actually what we want is everybody connecting to world mobile air nodes and feeding air nodes to earth nodes and earth nodes to grow the ecosystem even bigger. Right, right. So whether you're a world mobile token staker, whether you're an air node operator or, or a tourist or a tourist, right. Yep. I feel like there there is an entryway to get connected with the World Mobile Network. Again, Mickey, I wanna thank you so much for your time. I know that you've got a lot of other things to do, but I, I thank you just for the couple of minutes that you spared with us to give us this, this alpha here. No problem. And I look forward to having you Pleasure. on the channel very Excellent. soon. I just got done touching on the World Mobile mobile network that has just been deployed here right behind this camera in about 20 minutes with Mickey. Now, Trim has just mentioned something with respect to how this could be used right by other people within the Cardano community. So yeah. kind of elaborate and tell us what that was about. Yeah, so I'm, I was just looking at this and he said, you know, it takes 20 minutes to uh, to deploy. It's, you know, all of this hardware and it, it seems approachable. It seems like, you know, it's not a massive cost or anything like you don't, you don't need to be an institution to set this thing up. And I was thinking about, you know, the, uh, the Iagon stature catalyst proposal for node operators to set up like the reputation thing, like people to find node operators when they need it. Like imagine World Mobile coming to that, finding node operators and saying, hey, you know, I live in wherever, I want to set up a node. And then some investor comes in, buys the hardware, they set up the node and suddenly, you know, World Mobile has another node set up. Thousands of people could do that in parallel. It's, uh, I think that would be a great way to scale up the network in you know, number of nodes and I think it would be a, a great use case. I, I agree, some, I think. Uh, real potential here. And, and what I love about this is, this is all infrastructure within Cardano, mm -hmm. building out the entire Cardano network, you know? One team using or building a product, yeah. having another team leverage exactly. that, you know, to their own benefit, you know? That is impressive to hear. That, that's what it's all about. It's like everyone benefits from that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's uh, this is very exciting to see. And I'm definitely going to be looking forward to having Mickey back on. You know, I would love to pose some questions about what you just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't expect that we were going to catch him as as we were at the booth. Yeah. Like <laughs> he just pulled up right behind with us. This note and everything. Yeah. Yeah. No. So perfect timing. I am excited to have gotten that first piece of alpha. Um, if you don't have any other thoughts, maybe we jump back in there and see who else we can catch.